Okay, so we looked at a couple of examples of main point, main conclusion questions. We're ready to move on to the next type of logical reasoning question, and that's the most strongly supported type. Before we do, though, I want to I want to talk about why this is the next type of question we're going to look at, and it has to do with a relationship between these two different types of questions. Now, for main point, main conclusion, you were presented in the stimulus with an argument, a premise. That supports a conclusion, and in our answer choices, you know, you had a couple of answer choices that, to greater or lesser degrees, disguise themselves as the conclusion, right? Something that looked sort of like the conclusion, but not really. But then, of course, the correct answer choice is the conclusion, right? So all you had to do was slap a label in the stimulus, slap a label on the part of the stimulus that's the conclusion, and then paraphrase that part of the conclusion in the answer choices. That was. Main point, main conclusion. For most strongly supported, the difference is that in your stimulus, you're just going to get premises. It's going to support something, right? And actually, let me let me write that over here for reasons that will become apparent very quickly. In your stimulus, in this next type of question we're going to look at, you're going to get premises, right? And the premises are intended to support something, but instead of telling you what the conclusion is, they just leave it blank, right? They just leave it blank. And then they ask you in the answer choices. Here are you know five different answer choices.、Uh, which of these answer choices, if you take it and toss it in here, would have this argument make sense? In other words, would be the right receiver of the support. You know, one way you can conceive of how they constructed this next type of question that we're going to encounter is by looking at the main point, main conclusion questions, and just taking this part of the stimulus that we used to call conclusion and just deleting it from the stimulus. And placing it in the answer choices. That's it. But this seemingly superficial move creates a lot of new challenges. Specifically, whereas previously all we had to do was recognize, right? Whereas all we had to do was recognize the support structure that flows from the premise to the conclusion. Now we have to understand just what is supported and what isn't. And this is actually a big difference. Okay. Now the reason. I put it over here, as opposed to underneath over here, is because we're actually going to look at this hybrid type of main conclusion、uh, MSS question. This hybrid type between the two. Before we formally move on to MSS questions, which will be the next set of questions that we do, and it's this hybrid type of question where, in the stimulus, you actually just see a physical blank, right? They'll give you a bunch of stuff and they'll say, therefore, right? Therefore, comma blank. So that's your clue that all the stuff above is being used as premise to support. Something in the answer choices, and that something is going to be the conclusion. Okay, so once again, we're asked with the main point, main conclusion questions. The conclusion was already present. You just had to recognize the support structure and point the arrow in the right way. Here in this hybrid type, right in this half step before we get to the formal most strongly supported question type, we're going to have to really understand the claims being made in the premises, so that we can decide which of our answer choices. Receives the support, right? So, in other words, we're now being asked to understand just what it means for a set of claims to support another claim.